would like all of you to ask yourself, what is a hacker? What does a hacker look like? Is this someone you could trust? Can you imagine your child or a family member close to you becoming a hacker? Does the thought of that scare you? Now raise your hand if you think hacking is illegal and you want nothing to do with it. Mm. Okay, thank you. Please lower your hands. <laughs> For those of you who raise your hands, yeah. you're most likely thinking about the mainstream usage of hacker, a cyber criminal that breaks into computer systems for profit, steals identities, and takes over machines. Well, actually, that's not a very good role model at all. Hacker is actually a much more benign term. Hacker was a term coined by programmers and developers at MIT in the 60s. Back then, hackers were an enthusiastic group of engineers who had a love for excellence and wanted to innovate in ways thought impossible. These hackers made the first video game. When hackers hack, they create technology outside of our expectations. They don't use our principles, they use their own. Hacking is when MIT researchers replace $100,000 worth of lab equipment with Legos and open source circuitry. That is hacker culture. That's why we need them. They solve problems we didn't see with solutions we couldn't imagine. That's why we need to create hackers and encourage hackathons and hacker culture everywhere. Let me tell you about my first hackathon. It's March 2014, and it's Citrus Hack at UCR. It's sunrise, and I don't even notice. I have three cups of coffee in my system, and my 36 hour awake, and only one thing's going through my mind. Why isn't this working? I look up from my laptop, and my teammate looks up from his, and he says, did you get it to work? I'm drained. And I look at him and say, no, but I'm going to sleep. How are things on your end? He smiles proudly at me and raises up a circuit with a blinking LED. I got the Bluetooth module working. I, we can now talk to the microcontroller. I'm so lucky to have this guy as my partner. I didn't even know what the microcontroller was until the day of. I go to sleep on the floor instead of walking to my apartment to save time so we get back to work again. And I drift away to the sound of 70 keyboards clicking. Our hack, for this hackathon, a 42-hour competition organized by ACM, our school's computer science club, was thought of by my teammate named Claire Lee. Her genius idea was to connect Wi-Fi capabilities with coffee makers. And so that was what we're gonna do. We're gonna take the club room's coffee maker and connect it to the internet, giving the mighty power of wireless coffee making to anyone with a smartphone or a computer. <laughs> We called it Coffee Plus Plus, the next iteration of coffee making. <laughs> and we actually built it under very substandard conditions. Some things may or may not have blown up. Like I said, it was an adventure. This was not something that people had to go to. People were here because they wanted to build things. They didn't do it for school credit. They didn't do it for extra credit. They did it for themselves. We were all here for one reason, to build. I spent 30 hours working on this project. I don't spend 30 hours on my homework. That's ridiculous. Why did we work so hard? Being at that first hackathon forged some of my fondest memories and most pivotal moments. Star company started approaching us with job propositions immediately, and that led to my first internship, and that led to my first paycheck. This was a big deal. I spent an entire summer working on virtual video games, and I ended up with a paycheck of $2,000, which was awesome. How was I gonna spend it though? For a broke college student, this was a big deal. The old me would have spent it on video games or a new phone or something like that. But I grew a lot when I was at People's Space. I met people who were passionate about making their dreams come true, and I wanted to be like one of them. So it was settled. I was gonna spend all of my money on new hacks. I didn't have $2,000 worth of spending money. I had a $2,000 R&D budget. I started spending hundreds of dollars on purchasing materials for making my own aquaponic system. An aquaponic system is a device that grows fish with aquaculture, and that means to grow fish in water, and combines it with hydroponics, which is growing plants in water without soil. 
I mean, you might be wondering, why is this guy doing this? He's a programmer. I thought he said he was going to work on a new hack. Well, this is where the hacker mindset comes in. My thinking was along the lines of, if you give a man the fish, you feed him for a day. If you teach a man to fish, you feed him for a lifetime. But I already knew no one wanted to learn how to fish. So if my solution, if my des desire was to feed a man for a lifetime, then why not give a man a machine that I taught how to fish? That was my idea. And one R&D budget later, I was able to show my stuff at FundHack, a hackathon organized by the company Crowdfunding Pays. They promised to launch a crowdfunding campaign and manage the pr promotions for a cause that they believed in. My dad and, my, and me had to disassemble our aquaponics system at home. It was massive. It grew 90 plants and had uh, 50 gallons of capacity. We had to drive it all the way to Irvine and then reassemble it there. Some friends I made at People Space saw us struggling and offered to help us reconstruct our artificial ecosystem on wheels. The aquaponics system won first place, and I got that crowdfunding campaign, something I will hope to launch in the near future. But keep in mind, I, though, although I won the competition, I didn't spend $2,000 because I wanted to win. I spent $2,000 because I wanted to hack. Hacking was success. Winning was just the expression of people believed in me, and that was something much more valuable. I made friends with the organizers of FunHack, and now they're helping me and supporting me with my creation of a new prototype. I named my brand HG Aquaponics, and my goal was to create sustainable food production systems for people who are subject to food deserts. HG Aquaponics made another appearance at HackSC 2015. I was back. This time, with the support of a talented team, we created a platform for aquaponic automation. We wanted to create automated farms, and so we taught our system to send our smartphones push notifications when the water needed to be restored or the fish needed to be fed. People were excited for us and people were excited for sustainable technology. We won two of the 10 awards given off at that competition. The fact that people were excited for sustainable technology, for eco-friendliness, that was a big win for all of us. This isn't a story about how a handful of students benefited from hacking. This is a story about how hacking has benefited all of us. It is said that programming is the new literacy, the ability to know how to let computers help them solve those problems. Challenge. If you believe in a future where hacking is mainstream, a future where people have the ability to access education that will allow them to understand the way the world works around them, and also to participate in shaping that world, then reach out to your local hackathon or hackerspace. Because the heart of hacker culture isn't programming. The heart of hacker culture is us, the community. Hacker culture to me was meeting the countless people who cared about sharing their knowledge and skills with me. If it wasn't for them, I probably wouldn't care about building anything. I wouldn't have mentored. I wouldn't have spent $2,000 on growing fish and plants. I wouldn't be giving a stock. But because everywhere I look in hacker culture, all I see is people caring, I'm moved. And that's why it's so important. It doesn't, you don't need to know how to program in order to attend hackathons. For example, Hacking EDU is a hackathon on April 25th at the PayPal headquarters. Their aim is to reinvent education. And you can bet that we're going to have teachers there. We need people who know what students need. And have your kids participate too. It's never too late and it's never too early. Even if you never have a desire for developing software, just apply the hacker mindset to whatever it is that you do. If it's psychology, law, business, social work, you can only do good by spreading the possible ideas out there. You might find a technologist who would love to implement your ideas, and you might, a technologist might find you and be inspired and say, you have the skill and insight to make my ideas work. By hacking together, we can make a more diverse tech community. Thank you.